It's the 2000s. Lincoln Park was the hot thing, the sixth generation of consoles was in full swing, and Spongebob was what all the kids were watching. Consumer media aside, very early on in the decade, America was hit with a national tragedy that shook the world, and in its wake spawned a war and a huge spike of American pride and Christian fundamentalism. We weren't going to take this sitting down. We were American, and we were God's country. We were a Christian nation. That was the status quo for America, and they let the whole world know. It was on the news all the time in every country, but when something becomes the norm and the foundation for our culture, that was going to open the door for counterculture. Some people didn't like this new status quo and were going to be vocal about it. There was a market for people heavily pushing back against this, and it would reach ahead in 2006, when a little book called The God Delusion came out. The God Delusion, written by evolution biologist Richard Dawkins, was a book that set out to make the argument that not only did God not exist, but also any person that believed he did was delusional. There have been plenty of books critical of religion and the concept of God in the past for sure, but not to this extent and never got the attention this book did. It became a New York Times bestseller and was a hot button topic for a while. It spawned many debates, many books made to counter it, but the most important thing it spawned, it opened the door for many new atheists to have their voices heard but it was still the 2000s and options were limited. That's why Lart ran to this newfangled website called YouTube. In 2006, the internet was still a relatively niche place, for only small circles of people all hovering around a few topics, and one of those topics was atheism. A ton of non-believers started popping up on YouTube to express their religious trauma, the lack of belief, or videos just made to get a reaction out of people. Just people cutting a webcam on, talking about religion into it in glorious 240p. You could find these in all corners of YouTube. It was a way to connect with other non-believers who felt the same way. It was this little community of atheists that were always connected. This group didn't have a leader or any sort of organization, but there was one guy who was probably the most well-known in this community. This is TJ Kirk, most well-known as The Amazing Atheist. TJ was probably the most famous and controversial figure in the atheist community on the internet, and his impact was felt in all corners of the web, and he's still talked about to this day, but probably not in the way he would like. And we're going to discuss why that is. This is the story of TJ Kirk. TJ created his account on November 20th, 2006, very early on in the website's history. His first video uploaded has since been removed, but archives of it still exist. In this 10 minute video of TJ trying to eat the camera, every aspect of what his content will focus on and his personality are shown off in this. I've been coming around for a while looking at everyone else's and kind of mocking them, as I'm sure most of you are mocking me now. Oh. I'm just sick of, you know, I don't know what I'm sick of, everything, I guess. My name is T.L. Kincaid, I'm 21 years of age, I know I look a little older. Um, I'm basically your average, everyday person, I guess, you know, aside from the, you know, insanity and actual IQ and the uh, triple digits, I guess. And I've even seen a few people that are more arrogant and, and you know, just all around bastards than I am, so I figure if these people can actually get halfway liked on YouTube, maybe I have a chance too. Probably not, but you know, because I'm sure I'm more arrogant than I even realize I am. 
his laid back, not caring attitude, his sarcastic and quippy humor filled with edgy jokes, his acknowledgement he's not exactly the most likable guy, this video shows us why exactly TJ got the reputation he did. He had no problem saying what was on his mind. Consequences be damned. In a time where religion was everywhere all the time and some didn't like that, a man who just wanted to talk crap about it and everyone involved was appealing to a lot of atheists. I don't believe in your little fairy tale about a guy that got nailed to a tree and died for our sins. So he didn't pull a movie bob. He didn't start out as an innocent channel that slowly got completely overtaken and warped into being political. TJ, from the very start, was already very politically driven. He would talk about a ton of mainstream topics, from tragedies to fads, always finding a way to express how he felt about someone or something, bash religion in the process, in his own TJ way. You little nitpickers out there who want to jump on every instance of me saying Jesus Christ or God damn and saying, you're not an atheist, ha 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 ha. You're a moron. Go shoot yourself. Thank you very much. That's all you really needed to grow an audience around the time. Agree with the audience's opinions, mock the people they don't like, and that's all it really takes. Some people didn't want in-depth documentaries or high-budget videos. A lot are just fine with having their opinions validated. When you really get down to it, the vast, vast majority of TJ's videos were just him talking into a camera. That's it. Just talking about a current topic with some jokes and pot shots thrown in, maybe a strange skit here and there. and repeat this ad nauseum for 18 years. They are very low cost, production value wise, but people weren't coming here for that. The main pull of TJ's videos was his personality, the way he expressed himself and his opinions. He always had this way to break things down to a consumable way for his audience, who were no doubt watching him in a way to connect with other non-believers and share their thoughts and opinions on these subject matters. And speaking of which, I need to go ahead and get this out of the way. I am not here to try and debate TJ. I am not here to debunk him as I am no way qualified to do so. The existence of God and the impact religion has had on society has been up for debate for centuries, eons even. Hundreds, thousands of arguments have been made and you're not going to be hearing any new ones in this random YouTube video. I'm not here to challenge anyone's views on religion or anything like that. I'm sure everyone has their reason to believe what they want to believe, be it trauma or just growing out of something, I'm not here to question that. There are dozens upon dozens of people who are probably itching to do that and are probably way more qualified than I am, so I'll leave that up to them. I am simply here to focus on TJ, his history, and his impact on the internet. And his impact on the internet, at least in the religion politics scene, cannot be underestimated. While Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens were the idols for the atheism scene in general at the time, TJ was basically the face of internet atheism for the longest time. His reach in the atheist community was undeniable. A ton of people were watching him, a ton of people looked up to him, he was the self-proclaimed god of the godless. In this incredibly small minority of people online, if you were a part of it, it was next to impossible to not have at least heard about him. I think probably the most appealing aspect of his persona was, he wasn't like Dawkins or Hitchens, he didn't have dozens of degrees in different fields, he wasn't some intellectual that had written multiple books over decades, that's for later. He was just some guy. He was a guy that just talked into the camera about current topics, cracking jokes and making fun of people. He showed up on CNN one time and you can tell he seems somewhat out of place. The other guys are dressed somewhat professionally, but TJ here has his chest exposed. Even dark side Phil knew when to get dressed professionally. This made TJ somewhat relatable to a lot of people, specifically to young teenagers who were growing up in conservative Christian households and wanted someone to say what they wanted to say. If there's anything teenagers love to do, it's to rebel against their stuck-up parents. But it's all just meaningless, mind-washed babble trying to get you to put money in the fucking collection plate disposedly used for good shit. Since TJ has been on YouTube for going on almost 18 years now, he has covered every single topic and trend that happened at the time. His channel is almost a time capsule of YouTube. Everything was covered. People would use him as a news source to get all their info. They liked the way he would present topics and the humor he added to them. One of my favorite little pastimes while doing research for this is just clicking on a random video from him from a random year and see what he looks like during that era because TJ has changed his physical appearance more times than YouTube has changed its UI. He can go from new metal lead singer to Captain Tidy to living proof of Sasquatch. It's quite fun to see all the changes he went through, all those rages against society. I can sit here and repeat how much of a reach TJ had and how much of an influence he had on a lot of people for like another 10 minutes, but I think you get the point. So he quickly gained a following online for his content, personality and overall presentation. Being part of a very vocal minority probably helped. So what's the problem? 
Well, the problem was TJ, TJ was kind of an asshole. Due to all the extremely loaded topics covered in this video, I'm pretty certain YouTube is not going to be very kind to it. That's why I felt the need to get a sponsor. Sorry, monkey man gotta eat. That's why I would like to say that this video is sponsored by Private Internet Access. We live in the internet age, and everyone wants your data to spread around and to ring as much out of you as possible. That's why it's best to get a VPN like Private Internet Access. A VPN hides your personal info and data and keeps them in an encrypted tunnel. It'll prevent those pesky corporations and hackers from stealing your data. You can change your IP address to whatever country you want, from all over the globe, from 91 countries and all 50 US states. Hmm, there, uh, there doesn't seem to be a uh, Congo Bongo Island, probably because it doesn't exist. What's the next best option? <gasps> And now we just cut it on and we're all set? It'll also block restrictions such as geo-blocking, allowing you to access content not available in your region across multiple services. Did you know that The Office is currently not available on US Netflix, but over in the UK, it is? So just switch your IP to the UK and watch away? Maybe now I can finally find something good to watch on Netflix. If you're worried about having your data taken by these guys, it's already been proven in court that their no logs policy is legit. With over 30 million downloads and available for all platforms, you can go to the link in the description and get 83% off in four months for completely free from yours truly. One more time, thank you Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. You will surely not regret choosing to have this video represent you. that his entire channel was based around being an outspoken atheist, in a time of religion being all over the place in times of panic and terror, TJ, by his mere nature, was always going to spark controversy no matter the case. TJ was fully aware of this. He said it in his first video. He wasn't trying to change anyone's minds. He wasn't trying to make anyone come over to his side. He just wanted to make fun of people. Unlike most atheists, I have no, not even the faintest ambition of uh, changing anyone's mind. I'm not interested in trying to convert Christians uh, or try to make people see reason, they're always going to find some reason why what you're saying is wrong, why uh, God can still exist no matter what evidence we have that he doesn't. TJ, very consistently in almost all of his videos, was a massive douche. But not only that, he knew he was and he actively wallowed in that fact. He encouraged it. He went out of his way to say whatever he could to get under as many people's skins as possible. He would make some good points and arguments one minute, and in the next, he would throw out slurs, swears, and blasphemies any chance he got. He would defend stuff seen as taboo just because he wanted to piss off people watching. Uh, let's defend these three things that you have decried, okay? Uh, basically incest, polygamy, cannibalism. Yes, I'm going to defend all three. It wasn't just Christianity and religious people either. He would go after touchy subjects, celebrities, and anything he didn't like with his cynicism and snark. Everyone and everything was on the chopping block. He didn't care. If he went to my school looking like this, we wouldn't have called him JB, we'd have called him PB for punching bag. For those wondering why someone who is openly a dick gained a following like he did, you were either too young or trying to block out memories. You have to understand something here. Internet culture around the late 2000s was a very different place. Everything these days is squeaky clean and made as safe as possible to ensure you get those advertiser dollars. They were a non-factor during the late 2000s. It was all about being edgy and counterculture. It was a way smaller place, and it was really just entertainment for you and your pals. Atheism was very prevalent in the late 2000s online. It was so prevalent that it used to be one of the default subreddits on Reddit in its early days. And I will give TJ this. He was a master at controversy. He knew how to bait people, and he did. Look at this video. I hate religion and Jesus too. Oh, almost 3 million views. Look, look, look at that dislike bar. Look at it. 66,000 dislikes, over 100,000 comments, all of which is people arguing about religion. All that mattered on YouTube back in the day was views. If you're an unlikable heifer today, nobody will watch you and the algorithm will spit you out. Back then, all that was needed was to click on the video in the video maker one. Nothing else mattered. TJ was a master at this, probably because religion was also one of the touchiest and most debated topics on the planet. 
My comment section is gonna look like a trash fire. 100,000 comments, I, I, I cannot get over that. I've seen music videos with over a billion views have close to that many. He had a ton of ongoing series like Banned From, talking about very obvious fictional stories that got him kicked from different places, and a series called Pwned, a series entirely dedicated to making fun of a certain person or group. Oh, oh lord, that, that, that name. I, I haven't seen anyone use Pwned in years. I felt my hairline recede back a whole inch just saying that out loud. From and controversy was a very easy way to gain traction back in the day. Do you remember the Amanda Todd story? The girl who was stalked, doxxed, and harassed until she took her own life. The whole country was up in arms, and a ton of people held memorials for her. You want to know what TJ's response to her was? This. A bunch of other YouTubers were making response videos calling TJ out, but TJ had an army of teenagers ready to defend him, no matter the case. Hell, there was a time when Boogie went after TJ. Number one, I called him an asshole. Number two, I said that his YouTube channel was built out of anger and hatred. And uh, number three, I said that the things that he says tend to be very unpopular. But it has nothing to do with his atheism. TJ has made many enemies over the years because of his channel, and he doesn't really care. Because his videos are incredibly exaggerated for the point of humor. Edgy humor, yes, but he's really only out to rumble feathers. He's essentially a character. But that argument can only get you so far. When you're exaggerating for the sake of comedy, I think it's important to let people know how much is exaggerated. TJ didn't really have a filter on some of the stuff he said, and thus his actual thoughts and beliefs sort of melded together with this exaggerated persona that was created just to get under people's skins. Hi, little boy. Would you like some candy? I have a bunch in my van. To this very day, people cannot make sense of parody or when someone is clearly joking. That's not to say he didn't have a few good deeds here and there, putting out videos for charity and such, even putting out videos criticizing other edgy atheists, some of which would go on to do terrible things. And we shouldn't turn him into a monster, and we shouldn't turn him into a hero. We need to think of him as exactly what he was, a pathetic fucking teenager who didn't know um, that, that what he was doing was wrong. The Amazing Atheist was a big channel. He was definitely getting a ton of publicity, good and bad, but he was smart. He knew he needed to branch out from just talking in a camera. And branching out is exactly what he did. So far, I've been sort of very neutral on everything regarding TJ, despite the fact the guy was purposely going out of his way to make people upset. I was just setting the mood and tone of how things were back then and how TJ got the reputation audience he did, because now this video is about to take a shift in tone. Now is when we shift over to other things TJ did, as he was quite the jack of all trades. He did a ton of other things besides YouTube, and we're gonna talk about those. Now you might be wondering, what is my relation with TJ? Was I an old fan? Was I one of his critics? Was I one of the people he made fun of? Well, actually, my first exposure to TJ was his work on That Guy With The Glasses. Yes, TJ was on Doug Walker's website for a time, but he wasn't known as The Amazing Atheist. He was known as The Distressed Watcher. Instead of videos of him talking about current topics and making fun of religion and various people, his videos over here were different. He instead reviewed movies and trailers. He had a whole series called Trailer Failure, entirely dedicated to making fun of and criticizing movie trailers. Hello, I'm the Distressed Watcher. I review the previews and let you know which trailers are failures. This was my first exposure to him. I had no clue about his Amazing Atheist persona until way after the fact, and I liked the videos for what they were. I, I still probably prefer the other content creators on the website, but, but they were fine. The thing I will always remember from his brief stint as the Distressed Watcher was his top 10 video game bosses list he made, where he lists off a bunch of really cool video game bosses I mostly agreed, and then what is number one? Number one, the clock. You're playing Tetris. It's easy, the blocks drop nice and slow, giving you ample time to think. Then they get faster. And what? The, the clock? What, what kind of contrarian bullshit is this? Who has ever called a clock in a video game a boss fight? Games constantly make you race against a bullshit clock. Oh god, here it is! Watch out for the clock! Oh, oh! That is the dumbest number one spot for a top 10 I've seen since Gerard the Completionist put in the YouTube algorithm as number one in a top 10 worst games list because YouTube wasn't paying him enough. 
That actually happened, by the way. He wasn't on that guy with the glasses for too long, only about two years before he left, because I think he realized the site was putting other creators as priorities before him. They didn't really vibe with his very specific sense of humor. Anyone who enjoys this movie should be rounded up into a concentration camp and killed. But fret not, as TJ was a man of many talents, as he is also a writer. He wrote a couple of books over the years, and eventually would have compiled them into a book called The Douchebag Bible. Now, I already have PTSD of another YouTuber's book I already read, so I only really skimmed through this one, and well, how can I put this? Imagine taking TJ's religion videos and putting them in text form. It's pretty one-to-one. -one. You're not really missing out on much if you haven't read this. But TJ is also a songwriter. Yeah, it's breakfast time! He wrote lyrics for a band that was made by Adam from Your Movie Sucks, uh, okay. I, I didn't expect him to come up. I guess Adam just asked TJ to write some lyrics for him and TJ provided. Let's uh, let's see what fire TJ has written for us. The world is dark, but I'm the spark that lights the path. I can save you or I can damn your soul. Well, the singing is good, but the lyrics definitely leave much to be desired. Tie me to the chain link fence and beat me down, I have no defense. But it's like everything TJ makes has to be overtly edgy for no reason. You don't have to keep the persona up 24-7, TJ. Jesus! While also talking about his other ventures, I should bring up probably one of the most infamous aspects about TJ's time on the internet. His constant e-begging. TJ was asking for money and donations all the time. When I mean all the time, I mean non-stop. Basically, I need to come up with uh, $220 before the day is through or they're gonna shut the power off in here. Books! How can you say I'm wrong to ask for books, especially on my birthday? If you you wanted to, um, there are some things I'd like. Um, <laughs> Send me some fucking money, because I need it. And um, no, I'm not shameful about it. Uh, I, if, if I didn't have this medium, I'd probably just put dirt in my face and go big on the fucking streets. That's how shameless I am. Five buck Amazon gift card. More if you want, because you know, you can send me like ten thousand uh, dollars in Amazon. Do money. Not read it! That'd be good. I know times are hard. Times were especially hard during the recession of the late two thousands. But TJ never stopped asking for money. The reasons for needing money? Some are understandable. Some are way more questionable, and will make you raise an eyebrow. And that means I need new cameras. I need new lenses. I need new lighting and video equipment. I need new sound equipment. What's wrong with the setup you have now? You have a decent camera, decent set, decent everything. What, why do you need more? Even the comments were fed up with TJ's begging around the time. Many have accused TJ of just flat out scamming his audience for stuff he didn't need. And I'm not gonna say definitively that's what's happening here, but a lot of the things he asked for are just, why does your audience need to finance this? He asked his audience to fund a road trip to film stuff and also to get laid. I have a girl coming over. I want to impress her, so. I need money. He'd make a video asking for money, and then shortly afterwards, do stuff like this. You guys like my new jacket? It's lambskin. He was almost certainly making new skeptics around the time. Not just a religion, though, of himself. But we can definitely go further. TJ, being the guy he is, trying to push the envelope as far as you could go on what you could say on YouTube. YouTube started cracking down on TJ after a certain point, which he was absolutely against. You haven't been allowed to access my YouTube account for nearly two weeks now because YouTube decided that two of my videos were so very offensive that my account needed to be suspended for two weeks. And no matter how much I tried to argue and reason with them, they wouldn't let me back on. After a while, he had had enough. He decided he was going to make his own website. With blackjack and hookers. In 2009, the first attempt was made. It was called Free Speech Vids. I, I wonder what the purpose of this site could be. Now, this website has, surprisingly, very little documentation online. It was very short-lived and only a couple snapshots exist on the Wayback Machine. It basically seems to be another That Guy With The Glasses-like website with a few creators making videos here, all of which were TJ's pals. 
While the website is not very documented, how they got the money for the website very much is. A lot of the videos I took down will be reappearing on my new website, freespeechvids.com, under construction right now. He got on a stream with a bunch of euphoric friends, one of them being a prototype Cyrax, also known as Fake Sagan. Now, TJ didn't do much here, but his friend Fake Sagan here made the stream incredibly hard to get through. As the night went on, they all slowly got more and more intoxicated and started throwing out slur after slur and tons of insults. There's more in bomb strump here than an episode of the Boondocks. They started making fun of the people donating, even threatening to start banning people for not donating enough, and then Fake Sagan went off the deep end. He brought out a knife and threatened to hurt people and himself, and then he brought out a firearm. Did you put one in no. the chamber? Uh -uh. Why me? I didn't have to use it. There is one in the fucking chamber. I didn't do anything. I just had it in my pocket. <laughs> That's the way you gave it to me. So now they have a drunk guy with a loaded gun pointing it at everyone and himself. The string quickly turned to shit. Donate $150 right fucking now or you will watch me die. <laughs> You can see TJ and the others trying to take the firearm away multiple times, but he wasn't having it. Do not let a drunk man have a gun. He later on also cuts himself on stream to be edgy and eventually starts becoming groggy due to blood loss and then they had to shut the stream down to go get him to the hospital. Spoiler alert, nobody died except for the website itself. It barely lasted a year, if even that. Since there was little to no documentation of it, nobody cared and nobody went to it. So it was just a failure on TJ's part. But with that donation stream, can you really wonder why? But TJ's not one to give up, because later on, he will try his hands yet again at another That Guy With The Glasses Like website, this time with more content creators. It was called Not Productive. And they started an Indiegogo for it, asking for $20,000 and fell just short of it, only making $17,000. But they still got close, so the website was made. And this time, they got content creators actually worth a damn, like the Investigamer and the, uh, Ranting robots. Two guys in robot costumes that review games and bash religion. We are the ranting robots, we are atheists, and the human Bible is complete and other nonsense. Somehow, I don't feel so bad about watching people in that guy with the glasses anymore. And that's what our concept, Not Productive, is. It's a place for high quality content. God convincing you that you were born an evil sinner as a cute, adorable baby, and that no matter how much good you do in life, that unless you believe in this mass delusional cult Sky Daddy, that you will burn forever in hot, burny, hot flame, burn, burn. But hey, 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 Adam from Your Movie Sucks is back, so if for fans of him, you're in luck. Yet again, nobody really used this site. If you couldn't tell since this is probably your first time hearing about it. If you go to it now, it just redirects you to the YouTube channel, which hasn't been updated in nine years. And Free Speech Vids is now a geoscience laboratory website. Well, it sort of fits with all the science talk in most atheist videos. And that's the end of TJ's attempts to make his own that guy with the glasses. Many would accuse TJ of just putting out half-assed clones of Doug Walker's website and just pocketing the money. $17,000 definitely did not get you quality here. Now this, of course, was also not the end of TJ's multiple endeavors. There was also a Let's Play channel, a bunch of podcasts, among other things. But the fact of the matter is, TJ was only really good when he was doing his usual, talking into a camera on YouTube. Most of these have either been forgotten or buried by TJ because, well, they were failures. So really, TJ was just better off sticking to his bread and butter. Speaking of which... <laughs> Yes, it is true in the late 2000s, atheism was all over the internet. It was where all the intellectuals were and conversed about their superior knowledge over those religious sheeples. Well, unbeknownst to them, there was trouble in paradise on its way. As said at the start of the video, the internet was this niche little thing for what was seen as nerds in the 2000s. But in the 2010s, with the introduction of smartphones and everything now integrated to the internet, the masses were now becoming more accustomed to it. And now tons of people from all sorts of religious backgrounds and political ideologies were now using it. The internet was niche no more. Of course, the other thing that also erupted in the early 2010s, here it is rearing its ugly head again, Goobergate. Yes, we're back here again. For for those of you who don't know, I went into slightly more detail about it in my Movie Bob video, but it's not really as relevant here. I, I just need to top it title, okay? Leave me alone! 
Goobergate being brought up here is a representation of what internet culture was like during the early and mid 2010s. There was a huge push for feminism in not only gaming culture, but every little group that had formed online over the years. When this push for feminism in the atheist community happened, the ones who had already been in that niche subgroup for years were not having it. People have dubbed it Atheism Plus, a movement that pushed for social and political change under the veil of atheism, so basically just feminism with a tiny fedora. There was a huge pushback towards this feminism wave from that community, for the big ones at least. A ton of atheist channels started moving their content from bashing religion to bashing feminism. TJ was one of those who made this shift in content. He had already made comments on it in the past, but they were a huge focus for him now. TJ's feminism videos are some of his most famous. In fact, I think his feminism videos were actually more controversial than his religious videos, mostly because he arguably went even harder on feminists than he did religion. If you're a man and you do something to a woman, you are an abomination. If you're a woman and you do something to a man, you go, girlfriend! Mm -hmm. Feminism was now public enemy number one, on the internet at least. Yeah, he was still going after religion once in a while, but his feminism videos were doing rounds. He attracted a whole new audience of people with these videos, which he would later regret. We'll get back to that later. He would make all sorts of videos, talking about double standards and the absurdity of some feminist claims in his, of course, TJ way. Everyday feminism fixing to connect them dots, y'all. Ooh, look, all them dots, and you connect them and you see patriarchy. Ooh, it's the patriarchy coming for ya. <laughs> the same way he attracted all those atheists from the 2000s, he was now doing for all those anti-SJW types in the 2010s. He was also making many new enemies, but for TJ, that was nothing new. This is uh, an article called Feminist Frequencies Ordinary Women Campaign Keeps Kicking Ass Despite Harassment. Then it, it starts to mention yours truly, not by name, of course, because, you know, she's not gonna put me in the spotlight. This disliking of feminism and all the new enemies he made would lead to probably the worst thing TJ has ever done. I avoid talking about it because it really isn't relevant to anything, but TJ has claimed, well, I, I'll let him explain it. I was molested as a child. All right, I said it. As were many other people. And it was only a one-time thing. And I don't feel as though it psychologically damaged me, but the reason I want to talk about it is because now everyone else is going to think that that is the, this, the case. That is something that uh, has made me more what I am or whatever. Now, I can only say that will screw someone up for the rest of their life. It's a heartbreaking matter. He was able to move past it and put his demons behind him. It had no effect on the content he made or who he was today. I don't believe in the victim mentality. And I don't like when people try to say, oh, you're a victim because this happened. No, I'm not a victim. You know, I don't lay the blame for any of my problems today on that shit because that shit is gone. It has passed. Now I'm bringing this up because I want you to keep this in mind for what I'm about to tell you. In 2012, TJ got into an argument with a feminist over on Reddit, but for some reason, this feminist really got under TJ's skin, like more than usual. The thing about this feminist though, she was said to be a victim of Something that is incredibly traumatic and will probably haunt her for the rest of her life. Well, when TJ found out what he told this woman, it is so vile that I, I don't even think I can show it in this video. It would get the video age restricted. It's that bad. The only details I can really give you is, he told her to relive it, and that the one who did it deserved a gold medal. He then started threatening to do the deed himself. Now obviously, today this is absurd. No content creator today could say this and get away with it. But you have to realize something. Like I said earlier, this is just how some people were back then. Say the most edgy, offensive stuff humanly possible to get under someone's skin, no matter the case. You bunch of lying, no good punks, and I know who it's coming from because I've backtraced it, and I know who's emailing and who's doing it, and you've been reported to the cyber police and the state police. Consequences will never be the same. TJ wanted this feminist to hurt. He wanted her to suffer mentally and emotionally, and this is what he did to do that. Let me remind you, his reaction to Amanda Todd was this. You think he's above something like this now? You think he wouldn't take the opportunity if it was given to him? 
and people all over the web would do stuff like this all the time, not just TJ. But the thing is, TJ and this feminist were both victims of having something awful happen to them at different points in their lives. They're obviously two completely different atrocious scenarios, one could argue they're not comparable, but the end result is, both are traumatic and will stick with you for life. You would think TJ would be able to empathize in some way, but because she disagreed with him, no, he flat out says to her, it should happen again. He did end up apologizing after the incident, the only time I can ever recall him ever apologizing for anything. But the damage was done. TJ just seemed to lack empathy in a lot of places. The only things that mattered to him are what he considered his own goals. He puts numero uno before everyone else. That's not to say he didn't try to connect with others. In fact, multiple times, he tried impressing the ladies, which he would sorely regret. After that very serious topic, we're back to being comedic. <laughs> what fun, am I right? Despite TJ's very abrasive attitude and edgy humor, it turns out love can bloom on the atheist battlefield. TJ has had many partners over the years. It's taken many tries to see who he was compatible with, but he tried his hardest in that field. I admire the hustle. He's had many ups and downs and has even resorted to tactics to get the ladies in the mood. I imagine he must have gotten into an argument with one of his lady friends of Revolution, and to prove, once and for all, we all evolved from some former primate, he sent them a video. This was a private video, but one of his friends thought it would be very funny if this video got to be seen by the whole world. What was in this video, you may ask? Bananas! Bananas! Oh, those mellow yellows! I, I don't even know why I tried to build it up, because you probably already know about it, but yes, a video leaked of TJ in 2011, putting a banana in places where it didn't belong. I obviously cannot show any of the video, but I can try and visualize it for you. Uh, imagine that scene from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory when Augustus Gloop falls into the Chocolate River, but instead of a fat German kid, he's a banana. Now, on one hand, this private video made just for a few friends being leaked is kind of a scummy thing to do. The masses were not meant to see it. On the other hand, this is beyond hilarious. When these leaked, TJ was now the butt of the joke. Literally. Banana and atheist jokes were now everywhere. Evolution jokes abound. Because how could they not? Once when I was seven years old, I sat on a banana. And of course, that changed my life. There seemed to be a fad of controversial YouTube atheists being obsessed with bananas around this time. I'm a banana! Okay, he's not controversial, he's a criminal. One would imagine that TJ would try and ignore this and hopefully it would go away. But actually, no. Believe it or not, TJ made a video in response to it getting leaked and addressed it in a very, I guess, professional way. I sent it to a few other girls that I talked to on the side and apparently one of them decided to share it with the world. I don't know who it was, nor do I really care. The things that I did, I did because I enjoy them. I wasn't ashamed of them when I was doing them in private. I see no reason to be ashamed of them now that they've been made public. I have to give it to the man. To have something like that leak and then fully dress and owe up to it without any regrets, that takes a lot of balls. He didn't hide or delete anything. He says it without any embarrassment or remorse. I have to give him big props for this. But big props don't mean shit here. My fans are pretty cool. They'll know what's up. They're not gonna judge me for this shit. Over the years, he has played into the whole banana incident. So he's self-aware and in on the joke. But that, that doesn't actually matter. You might be wondering, why did this get its own section and it's just a harmless little funny thing compared to when he was insulting a victim of something horrible? Well, that will be because this incident will haunt TJ until the day he dies. He can joke about it, make references to it all he wants. The fact of the matter is, this will be his legacy. This is what he will be remembered for. Whenever The Amazing Atheist is brought up in casual discussion, the banana will almost always come up in one way or another. To this very day, I can go on Twitter and still see jokes referencing him and his yellow companion all the time. I will be watching random YouTube videos, completely removed from religious or atheist discussion or anything that would relate to TJ, and there will be just a random pot shot thrown at him. All I have now is a computer to upload my videos on atheism and a kitchen full of bananas to shove up my ass. He can remove the banana from himself but he can't remove the banana from his public perception. 
Many people still bring the banana up, but nobody ever talks about its inferior sequel in 2013 involving hot bubbling oil. Oh God, TJ, did you learn nothing? Oh God, oh God, I, I, how do I visualize this? Imagine the 2010 uh, the BP oil spill, but instead of the ocean, it's a Yeti. <laughs> Last year, J.K. Rowling was doing her typical rounds of arguing about gender on Twitter when TJ was suddenly brought up on her timeline and somebody told her about the banana. The creator of Harry Potter knows about the banana incident. Bananas Rectimus! TJ has done many heinous things in the past. Yes, he was very edgy and said a bunch of stuff to piss people off, but none of that matters compared to this. As time marches on, all the stuff involving TJ's controversial past fades out of memory. People get older, younger people replace the old, and only the most well-known tales of the past will be remembered. Like the atheist and his banana. Well, we're not in the 2000s or the 2010s anymore. We're in 2024. And TJ's grasp on the internet is a long distant memory. Well, not really just TJ, atheism as a whole. It used to be all over the place on the web, but now people just don't care anymore. The whole concept of atheism being your entire personality is just seen as obnoxious now. Oh, but, but, but they still exist, trust me. You can go on Twitter, type in atheist, and still see people stuck in 2009. They're very easy to find. But is anyone actually listening to them? These days, you see just as many people making fun of cocky atheists as you do kooky religious fanatics. Like, look at this dude. We need to remove In God We Trust off the dollar bill. Like, why? Why do we need to do that? What does that accomplish? People like this gave the label atheist a stench that will probably never truly go away. TJ himself, 18 years later, is still online. And his YouTube channel now basically is a side gig. He looks like a hermit now. He streams all the time now about current topics and political stuff, almost 2,500 videos and counting. There's a good chance he will probably see this video and respond to it. In that case, uh, hi TJ, hope you enjoyed the video. No hard feelings, your story was just too good not to tell. Banana Slam. He still has that abrasive, edgy personality somewhere in him, but he is definitely mellowed out over the years. I guess either because of him pushing 40, or just because he's been doing this shit for 18 years. That'll take a toll on a man. His politics have taken a slight shift into the liberal side of things, but that's fine. He has since stated, ever since making those anti-feminism videos, he attracted a lot of bad faith actors and people he didn't want to associate with, which is understandable. There were uh, nefarious characters, nefarious actors, within the sort of genre that I created that were trying to subvert it for extremist political uh, positioning. But then you realize, hey, <laughs> this is doing more than I thought. This is having consequences that not only do I not intend, but I can't control. I still... I still feel like I have an awful lot to learn, but maybe that's a good thing because back then I felt like I had nothing to learn. I felt like I already knew it all. I didn't make this because of political or religious reasons. I didn't make this to air out his dirty laundry or cancel him. I made this for pure entertainment. It's been a long road, a lot of twists and turns, and here we are at the end of our journey. I'd definitely say TJ is in the post credits phase of his career. Like, yeah, he's still trucking along, but nobody really talks about him as much anymore. Except when the banana is brought back up. He still has a small but very dedicated following on stream and on YouTube, so many of the diehards out there who watched him many years ago are still probably watching him. But right now, he just exists. And maybe that's how he prefers it. God bless, like and subscribe, and good night. Always believe in what you think is best for you. Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I would like to make an announcement. Blueberry pie, 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 blueberry pie. 
Everybody loved the blueberry pie. Everybody loved the blueberry pie. Everybody loved the blueberry pie. All right.